Welcome to AEDT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations, Week 10, Instructional Design, Video Clip 1 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapralos, and over the next few minutes, we will be discussing instructional design. And more specifically, an overview of instructional design will be provided. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number 1. Describe the serious game development process. Number 2. What does the design of a serious game begin with? Number three, what is instructional design? And finally, number four, what is the Clark Cosma debate? Serious game design. Let's begin by taking a brief look at the process involved in developing a serious game or simulation or any other form of computer mediated instructional tools for that matter. According to Becker and Parker, we should start with our needs analysis. This is where we choose the objective of our game, or describe the messages or the premises that our game intends to convey. We then move over to the research and preparation stage, and here we describe the system we wish to develop, we identify the observable elements, and we gather data. And that data may involve information regarding our end users. It can involve information regarding the institution in which the game will be used amongst others. These two stages, the needs analysis and the research and preparation stages, are part of the instructional design process and in my opinion are the two most important parts of the entire design and development process. Without a proper needs analysis and without proper research there is no guarantee your game will be effective. Next we move into the design phase and the design phase involves interface design, it involves gameplay and game mechanics design, program structure, and evaluation of the design. Of course, the design phase is strongly dependent on the information from your needs analysis and your research and preparation stages. We then move into the design document or the pre-programming stage. The design document details the gameplay and may involve the use of paper-based models. We then move into our programming phase and this is essentially the production of the operational model. The final phase of the serious game design and development process involves final testing and here we'd like to obtain some data regarding the effectiveness of our game. Final testing may involve pre and post testing, it may involve video recording the users while they play the game, monitoring various physiological responses of the player amongst other things. We just discussed how the process of designing serious games and simulations begins with instructional design. Yet in previous video clip, we talked about how it should begin with game design. Isn't this somewhat contradictory? Well, the process of designing serious games and simulations requires literacy in both game design in addition to educational and instructional design. But should it begin with game design instead of instructional design? Well, it really depends on who you talk to. There's two camps here. Some say game design is more important and you should begin with game design, while others disagree and think that you should begin with instructional design. I personally like to think of them as equally important and I don't like to place an emphasis on one or the other. I mentioned instructional design. But let's examine what instructional design actually is. We can define instructional design as the process of creating instruction through the analysis of learning needs and the systemic development of learning materials. There is both formal and informal approaches to instructional design. In the following video clip we will examine several major instructional design models and this will be followed by a discussion on how these models can be applied to serious games and simulations. However, prior to doing so, we will take a look at the Clark Cosma debate. This is a long standing debate that considers the impact of the medium on learning. The Clark Cosma debate consists of two sides. On one side, you have Richard Clark, who claims that it makes no difference to learning whether you use a lecture, a textbook, or simulation. In other words, the medium does not affect learning. 
On the other side, you have Robert Cosma, who argues that the medium does in fact make a difference. This medium affecting the message debate is quite old. For example, Socrates in ancient Greece complained that learning to write would diminish the memory capacity of his students, and therefore he argued that students should not learn to write. Now keep in mind that the technology we have available to us today is far different than the technology we had even going back just five to ten years ago. One of the consequences of the view that the medium is little more than a vehicle by which learning can be delivered is that most instructional design models, particularly those developed in the last century, fail to properly include the medium as an integral part of the design process. And the choice of the medium and its development happened at the end of the process, even with models commonly used today. This brings us to the end of our overview discussion on instructional design, and it brings us to a list of references that were used throughout this particular video clip including the last two which describe articles by Robert Cosma and Richard Clark outlining their stance within the Clark-Cosma debate. I strongly recommend you take a look at these. And this leads us to our list of synthesis questions. Number one, with serious game design and development, should instructional design come before game design or vice versa? Explain. And finally, number two, after final testing, a post-mortem follows. Discuss the importance of a post-mortem. Is it necessary? This is the end of this video clip. Thank you.